This is new to 2014. This may be one of the loudest student sections in the entire state. The jersey of Dakota Kimbrough, the young man who died in a car accident last year during the 2013 football season, will be retired. Since that meeting in 2011, neither team has won a playoff game, and in 2014, both are in danger of missing the postseason completely. It looks like we'll, though, have Capitol High in the first round, who many were picking to win the state title. You can win the volleyball game, the soccer match, the cross-country meet, but nothing matters if you don't win on the gridiron. The Great Falls Voyagers are currently in action, but they're not the only ones with the bats out this summer. And the streak goes on. The Fairfield girls basketball team has now won 120 games in a row. Total sports coverage. Fox Montana Sports starts right now. Good evening, Montana. I'm Dan Quartz, and here is your evening sports fix. Preparations are underway for the Carroll Saints football team as they get ready for their quarterfinal playoff game in the road to Rome. Saints host Missouri Valley in the NAIA quarterfinals, and fans can expect a defensive battle. Missouri Valley ranking number one in the nation in total and scoring defense per game, while Carroll is ranked at number three, not too shabby. This will be the first ever meeting between the Saints and the Vikings, but Carroll says they're more than well aware of the challenge that Missouri Valley presents. They're a great team, the number one in the nation in almost every defensive category. Uh, they were in the final four last year, semifinalists, and uh, you know they, they're close to knocking the door in, and they're going to be a team that probably is the most physical team we'll play this year. You know, I think we just need to stick to our game plan, um, try and develop a run, um, and then just do what we do. I think uh, our defense has always played great, um, so I think uh, it's a big week for our offense to prove you know what we're made of. With the regular season now in the books, it is time for the postseason. Before any games kick off, though, the Big Sky Conference releasing its all-conference teams and naming its players of the year. The Montana Grizzlies placing four players on the first team, led by two-time honoree linebacker Jordan Tripp. Also on the list is fellow linebacker J.P. Conangata, junior defensive end Zach Wagenman, and senior offensive tackle Danny Kistler also named the first team. Another stat is that all 24 starters for the Grizz making a list. No no one cut short of honorable mentions. And seven making the second team, not listed as center Kelby Oyland. The seven are led by wide receiver and return specialist Ellis Henderson and linebacker Brock Coyle. Henderson with late game heroics explaining his honor of making the second team. And even though they missed the postseason, the Cats still receiving several honors as well. Cats senior defensive end Brad Daly was named to the first team and was also awarded the title of co-defensive player of the year along with Cal Poly defensive tackle Sullivan Gross. The Helena native leads the nation with 14 sacks and 20 and a half tackles for a loss. Joining him on the first team was turn specialist Sean Johnson, junior returning one punt and two kickoffs for touchdowns this season. Four Cats were named to all-conference second team, leading the way senior running back Cody Kirk, who led the way for the Cats on the ground this season, rushing for over 1,000 yards. Great Falls native Tanner Bleskin was named to the third team. After years of finishing near the bottom of the American West Hockey League, the Great Falls Americans finding themselves currently in second place after getting off to a roaring start to this season. Great Falls is currently 16-4 on the season, with three of those losses coming to first place Helena. The Americans beat the Big Horns once already this season, snapping a three-year losing streak to the Big Horns in the process. The key to this year's success is partly to do with the 11-1 record the Americans have at home. But improved depth, something the team hasn't had in years past, and pretty darn good play on offense, defense, and in the net is helping a lot as well. I mean, we didn't have any depth last year. I think uh, just getting guys back from last year, getting new guys, and being able to, to get contributions from different people on a night-to-night -night basis, you know, when guys aren't playing well, someone else steps up to the plate. I mean, I think that's one of the reasons why we've been so successful early on. Our offense has been pretty strong, so is our defense, but uh, our goaltending has been really strong. Like, I mean, Evan Hauser set a record this year with three straight shutouts. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty impressive, so our, our, goalies have been, our goalies have been great. And the Bobcats getting a rematch with Cal State Northridge, who beat them just days ago. Seven minutes left in the first half. MSU's Marcus Colbert, three buckets. 32-24 Bobcats. More Cats threes as Stephen Holm. He's going to get one from the corner. That's a three in there. 35-26 
Bobcats, Matadors, Josh Green now driving the lane. Going to get the runner and one. Free throw no good, though. Lead cut to seven. Matadors doing it on defense. Steven Hicks the steal and the throw down. That made it 35-30 with three minutes left in the half. But the Cats answer Terrell Brown with a long two. Lead back up to seven. The Cats win 77-62. And it was a thriller at Alaska Airlines Arena, but the Grizz fall just short against the Huskies. UW taking this one 83-79. Jordan Gregory dropping 27, leading the way for the Grizz. Three players in double figures for them, but it was not enough as the Huskies hand the Grizz their second straight loss. Hey, that's it for sports. We're back after this. Well, since knowing Joe and getting just to see his heart in it, we had watched it before, um, but I wasn't near as passionate about it as I am now. Shelly Bolta described herself as one who started becoming a fan of MMA only recently. She was one who was more of a boxing fan, but still caught the eye of her husband, John. John sort of knew I was the right girl when I could quote all the Rockies. It was only recently that John Bolta lost his battle with cancer, but John was always described by friends as someone who never had a bad day in his life. I am so incredibly proud of John. What I'm most proud about him is I think that true victory is not letting hard circumstances change what's most beautiful about us. And from start to finish, from the guy I fell in love with to the guy I said goodbye to, he was the same guy with the same light in his eyes and smile on his face. To some, John Bolta was an ordinary person. But to many others, he took on a new legacy. His love of boxing and MMA allowed a new event to be promoted in his honor. Oh, incredible heart. I mean, that's what I've thought all along. You know, we're going to be doing this as much as we can, as often as we can to help people out. But there's a reason why he was picked first. I mean, he has a, a true fighter's heart. That is where tomorrow's Great Falls Rumble was put together. But promoter and friend of Bolta's Joe McMillan didn't realize how big it would become. This event has grown bigger than I thought it was going to be, honestly. I'm really excited about it. This is kind of our first time trying this. Um, I was going to try and do just a simple fight-a-thon for this fight. Promoter jumped on board. Um, a lot of the fighters are jumping on board, even my opponent's on board. Shelly Bolta is on board, and she hopes the rest of the community is too. Just my incredible thanks, and to tell all of Great Falls, you guys come out. MMA is so not what we think it is. It's such a wonderful thing in our community. Tomorrow night's 14-fight card begins at 7 o'clock. In Great Falls, Dan Quartz, ABC Fox Montana Sports.